lot of you guys are building business credit, right? Come on, somebody. Come on, Wealth Warriors. Come on, Credit Lovers Lifestyle. A lot of y'all are building business credit. And then I get questions from y'all saying, like, um, what should I use my credit for? And Or I don't have any income. And it really dawned on me that a lot of you guys are doing, like, the back end work, right? To, like, you know, look good on paper and all those things. But you're not actually launching the business. You're not actually doing the thing to generate the income. Guys, look, look, bars. It's a, a wealth building ministry. That means that we're using credit to leverage to build wealth. We're not using credit to get into a bunch of debt, right? So if y'all are getting all this credit and you don't have a business, a product or service that's actually going to generate some income, come on, somebody to pay it back. Well, now y'all are in trouble. So I got organized for you. I'm going to do it in 10 steps, but I'm going to cover all of these things. I'm going to cover um, the foundation, right? So getting started in your mindset. I'm going to cover the core. So like legal, you know, your credit, you know, funding, all of those things. And then I'm going to cover actually like the launch, guys. Hello? Come on, somebody. The actual launch. And there's some questions I want you guys to ask yourself. And mind you, the foundation, this part I'm going to do first, and then I'll go into the 10 steps, even though these 10, the, the foundation part is part of the 10 steps. Um, I want you guys to really think about this, like really, really, like I want you guys, if you have a notebook and paper and I mean it, y'all, like I'm, I'm on here, like write these questions down. I'm going to say this right here. When I'm asking you these questions, this is part of the foundation that you guys need to think about. And mind you, this is whether you're launching or relaunching or trying to scale your business, you should be able to answer every single one of these questions for your business. And if you can't, then you need to go back and like, Answer that. Like, nobody should know more about your business than you. Look, come on, somebody, right? So, first, I'm going to ask you guys um, some, one, some of the things I want you guys to think about, right? So, why are you doing this? Like, why are you actually launching? And this is not like, this is some of the mindset stuff, right? Um, and I want you guys to really think about, like, why are you doing this? The reason why I'm saying why is I want you guys to really think about because there's, there's a difference between somebody who's doing it because it's their gift, it's their passion. Some of you guys are monetizing your side hustle. Some of you guys just want extra money. Some of you guys are trying to retire from your job. You hate your job because how you handle this, how hard you hit it, what you're looking for, the time you put into it, um, your expectations for it. All of that is going to be different when it comes to, like, why you're actually doing it. Um, so think about like why you're, you know, what are you doing this for and why are you doing it? Why, 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 why? So my son, retirement and mind you, this is another thing. So write this down also. So why are you doing it? Right. And ask yourself that and really be honest too. Now, the next thing also, is this supposed to be full-time or part-time? I want you to think about this. Like, are you going to be doing this building this part-time while you're at your full-time job? Um, have you already left your job and you're like, oh crap, I need some money. Like I did look, come on, somebody, somebody said freedom. Right. And so think about like, is this is this one of your streams of income? That's another thing, guys. Write that down. How many streams of income do you have right now? And is this just one that you're actually adding? And mind you, all this goes into the foundation, because when you guys let me say this with foundation, with core and with launch, if you have one and not the other, it's a recipe for disaster. Like if you have all the foundation stuff and you don't have the core disaster, if you have all the core stuff and no foundation disaster, if you don't have the launch stuff, if you never launch and you do all, spend all this time and money, it's a disaster. Come on, somebody. So this is like the Trinity. Y'all know it's the wealth. I, I just thought that this is the wealth building ministry. So it's like a Trinity, right? You need all three. Y'all, somebody put in the comments, all three, like Share, comment, invite some people. Y'all can send me. What do you? What do you send? What are those things called? Super, super chats, badges, whatever. Also, does that make sense, y'all? Because some of y'all are strong in one area and not the other. And I want you guys to be disciplined in love. Like we're gonna be on here a good hour. Like I got a lot to share with y'all, right? So, but I, this is also goes to the mindset of an entrepreneur. I'm giving y'all free game, free game. That means I don't care if I'm on here for two hours. The person who really wants to launch their business is about to be on here all night. I don't care if they've been have one hour sleep. They're about to get all the information from somebody who has the results. Come on, somebody, right? So you need so you need all three. So think about also how many streams of income do you have right now? Write that down. How many streams do you have right now? And are you just adding this one actual stream? Now, there is a profile to somebody who's an entrepreneur. I want y'all to think about it. Is this really, really you? Like, are you doing this because everybody else is doing it? Or are you doing it because this is something you, that's really innate in you? Write this down, profile. I'm going to give you some key things to help you be a successful entrepreneur. Because what's going to happen is, is that you're either going to have these things, or if you don't, you're going to get them. Look, come on, somebody. Like, that's 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 the essence of an entrepreneur. 
you want to use your gift and monetize your passion, you have to be these things. So are you a self-starter? Are you self-disciplined? Um, are you goal-driven? Meaning, are, do you write down your goals and do you, make, do, do you put together steps to actually get there? The other thing is, do you need, now I'm going to say it with a smile on my face. Y'all see me smiling? Do you need motivation and inspiration daily? Motivate yourself. Look, you want me to be, look, you want me to be real? Motivate yourself. Inspire yourself. Write this down. Your life is the result of your daily habits. If you want to change your life, you have to change what you do daily. So step number one was the foundation. That's all the stuff that I just went through. All the questions you need to ask yourself about the income, about your um, about your habits, about your sacrifice, about what you're doing. All of that, okay, guys, was the foundation was step number one. Now, step number two, guys, is like your market research. What I suggest you guys do, and mind you, this is some real stuff, right? So think about like, you know, I was talking about people who do a Toro business. If you want to do a Toro business, but you live in Arizona in the middle of the desert and everybody online is doing a Toro business, should you do a Toro business? Right? I'm in Philadelphia area. So I do peer-to-peer -peer car rentals. I'm near airport. I'm near hospitals. I'm near colleges. Like I'm near, um, you know, we have like the, the um, I was going to say the Liberty Bell. We have, um, you know, down like, um old city you know what I mean like we have all different kinds of things down here right so philadelphia has all kinds of attractions it's a great city but this is where a tour business is great for somebody like me but depending on where you are that may not be a good business for you so market research think about is there a demand in your area where you live is it the best area to actually do right so you have to so so right now guys ask your clients or customers ask people you've helped why did you pick my brand what did you like about working with me did you get the desired results were the results better than you expected were they not as good as what you expected you know what would have improved upon this process like ask for feedback from your clients or customers that is golden that all goes into your market research and how you can make your brand uniquely you now, step number three, right? And this is where I saw these other videos is crazy. Pick your name and incorporate. Now, y'all, even if you're thinking about launching your business in a year or two years, this is this going to go into the, the business credit and everything. Incorporate your business now. But I will say, let me see, I see. If you don't know what you're going to call your actual business, just make it your name. Right. Like, you know, Terry Kowser LLC, Terry Kowser Consulting until I figure it out. But you, you want to want uh, to incorporate so that you can have your business bank accounts, guys. And I'm going to say something else right here. When you're incorporating and picking your name and incorporating, guys, everybody's not an LLC. Everybody should not be an LLC. Guys, action item. Speak to a CPA in your area and find out what is the best business structure for you. Should you be an S corp? Should you be a C corp? Are you a nonprofit? Are you an LLC? Right? I just don't re recommend a sole proprietorship. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Why? Because the whole goal is to separate the two. You know, pick a name. Pick the right structure. So pick a name, pick the right structure and incorporate now, even before you launch your business, even before, even before, even before. Guys, even if you're going to have a YouTube video, you know, like uh, you want to be a YouTuber, you want to be a podcaster, that's a business. I need you to expect greatness. How, God forbid that you make a YouTube channel just for fun and then something goes viral, you start making money and then YouTube wants to pay you AdSense, you start getting affiliate marketing, you start getting sponsors and you have no business and no business bank account to accept the money. Making a YouTube making a YouTube channel is a business. Making a podcast is a business. Somebody put in the comments, expect. I need to expect greatness. Expect growth. Expect sponsors, expect abundance, expect pros prosperity, expect, right? That means I don't care. Even if it's, I want to make a podcast, incorporate the podcast, expect greatness, right? Because you don't know what can happen. You have no idea what can happen, right? So go ahead and incorporate that thing. Pick the right structure, right? And I recommend you can do it yourself, but I don't recommend doing it yourself. So you can have a, some CPAs that's an account and some, um, some attorneys will incorporate you. Um, you can also hire a lawyer. Sometimes lawyers will incorporate you. You can do it yourself, but I don't recommend it because it's too um, important. I got to be brief. Don't they bother me, y'all? Um, it's too important if you just do like, you know, one T wrong, one I wrong. Um, you know, it, it can come back and bite you later on. I recommend incorporate.com or ink file. Incorporate.com or ink file. Guys, I'll when I repost this, I'll put the, a video, how to be a business correctly in 10 days because I have those websites in there. This is because they specialize in small business formation in all, in all 50 states, guys. That's all they do every day, all day long. And they can actually get your EIN, do your articles of incorporation. Um, they can do um, 
so like your bio, sometimes they help me with my 501C, like all those things, right? So step number three is incorporate right now, pick the right structure. Everybody should not be an LLC. All right. Step number four, guys, calculate the startup costs for your business. Guys, and if you're relaunching or if you never did this, if you never did this before, guys, evaluate right now. How much does it cost to run your business? Right. And there's going to be a difference. Somebody, look, somebody put in the comments cost, cost, cost. Right. We're going to do this like a business because y'all are bosses. Too many people just say, oh, I have a gift. I want to start a business. And that's why it's a disaster and never actually becomes Jesus, what God intended it to be. What is the cost? You need to know that as a business owner, and mind you, there's going to be different costs based on product or service, but just because you have a service, like I have a service, oh, I pay a ton of money every single month between, you know, apps and between servers and between, um, you know, like software, between cell phones, between laptops, between my team, between um, like just everything, right? There's all kinds of things. So if you have a product, think about how much is the materials? How much is it to manufacture it? Um, are you doing drop shipping? How much is it to ship it? How much is it to make the actual thing? If you have a service, what apps do you need? What services do you need? Do you need step number four? Calculate the cost to either start your business, to relaunch, to scale up wherever you actually are. How much does it cost? There's, gonna be, there's even going to be costs associated with the service, okay? Now, step number five. This is the step, y'all. Build your business credit and repair your personal credit right? So guys, everybody should have a goal of having a 700 personal score and above. So if I put the comment 700, everybody should have a 700 score and above, especially as an entrepreneur. Ex uh, I'm about to do another video. I'm about to do a video about uh, different ways you can use um, business credit. Guys, you understand, you know how many times credit has saved investors, entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs? You know how when somebody doesn't pay that invoice, but you got to order and you want to be able to use your business credit card to go get supplies from um, wherever, wherever it is. Or you want to be able to use your Home Depot card to get fixtures or appliances or your Best Buy card to get the paint and thing or your um, or your Raymore and Flanagan card to, to furnish your uh, Airbnb or your business line of credit to get your car for Toro. Like, come on, somebody. Your, your tier one account, your Staples accounts and stuff to get some more um, phones and lighting and equipment. Listen, credit will come through in a clutch. Somebody put in the comments, clutch. If you're an entrepreneur, you want to have excellent personal and business credit, period, period. No, no if, ands, or buts. You'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. You'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So 700 and above personal credit and have, come on, somebody. How many of y'all the credit only came through in a clutch? What about even traveling? Like, my God, I have travel cards with rewards because I travel so much. Well, I do my airfare and my flights on my travel cards so I can get discounts and get rewards and points. I could do it all over again. Now I'm at the point where I'm traveling for free. Shout out to ATL. I'll be in Atlanta next month with um with Latoya. It's free for me. It's free. It's, at this point, it's free because I use it so much. All the rewards and perks and stuff is actually paying for itself. That real talk, y'all, right? And so... 700 and above personal, you know, 80 and above business, build your business credit, right? So you already know, you know, incorporate your business, your EIN, your business bank account, your NAV business boost account, your DUNS number. Guys, I'll link my two videos, my one on how to build business credit in 10 steps. And I'll link my video on how to set up your business correctly in 10 steps for funding. You're making your appointment with your small business banker. Y'all been asked. And so, so build your business credit. <clears throat> you guys know I have at least 10 trade lines reporting for your business. At least 10 trade lines reporting for your business. At least 10 trade lines reporting for your business. Okay, guys? And have your NAV Business Boost account because your NAV Business Boost account will help you monitor your business credit and give you the actual trade line as well. All right? Step number six, and we talked about this already, is when are you going to do your business? And I also want you to pick a launch date. A launch date. A launch date or a relaunch date. When are you going to do your business? When are you going to start doing it? Look, start doing it tomorrow. When are you going to do it? And put an actual launch date or a relaunch date. Come on, Jake. I see you. Come on, Andrew. Um, Put an actual launch date and be communicate. Tell somebody. Tell people your launch date, guys. Like that way they're expecting it because guess what? You don't want to. How long I've been. Uh, look, when did I launch? The, when did I do the video about the cars? Like two, three weeks ago? Y'all been asking me about it. Now, did I just do a workshop and not do any videos or talk about it at all? I did a video. Then I asked y'all, and now y'all been asking me. And since enough of you guys asked me, now I made it. Did y'all peep what I did? Can, can, I, can I be real? Did y'all peep what I did? I'm not about to spend my time building this thing. There's no demand for it. Y'all don't want it. I listened to my audience. I listened to y'all. Y'all said, yes, Terry, we want more of this. 
We need more information on this. So then now I'm building that product out and I'm giving it to you guys. And you guys are already anticipating it. Come on. Look, can I be real with y'all? Practice what you preach. So the reason why I'm telling you guys pick a launch date is because you don't want to launch your business. You know, what's, what, 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 what month is this? March. You don't want to launch your business April 1st. And you're talking about your business April 1st. You don't want to launch or relaunch your business April 1st and you announced it April 1st. No, you want to pick a launch date and you want to build, build that momentum, build that, you know, build that expectation. You want to actually build it up, right? So when are you going to start your business and pick a date? That goes into number seven. Write this down. Launch strategy. Launch strategy. Launch strategy. What is your strategy to launch your actual business or to relaunch your business? Are you doing a grand opening? Are you doing pre-sales? Guys, pre-selling is amazing. I, I have to, I'm probably gonna put together like a Elite 10 masterclass. Um, pre-selling is amazing because you know how many people make courses and they pre-sell before they actually make the actual course? Pre-selling your t-shirts. If you guys have a product or service and you're like, I don't have all the money to make it or all the money to ship it, but you do a pre-sale and because of pre-sale, you earn $2,000 and it costs you 500 to make the things. And you use the money from the pre-sale to launch your actual business, y'all. It's level to this. This is, this is gonna be high-level masterclass. This is like overview, but because y'all are bosses, I need you guys to then go back and dissect the step the steps, listen to the questions I'm asking you guys, and go ahead and do the thing that's right for you guys. Come on, somebody, like your launch strategy. So is it gonna be a grand opening? Are you gonna do a pre-sale? Um, are you do you have an email list? Right? Are you gonna do specials in the very beginning? Are you someone that has no experience with your business in that area? So you're doing it free at first and then getting results and then launching the business. Are you somebody you're like, well, I'm an expert, so I ain't doing nothing for free. Come on, somebody. Come on. Who's that? Is that is X? Well, come on. Right. Launch strategy. You guys stop doing this blindly and just crossing your fingers and hoping for success. The, guess what? The people who have success plan for it. The people who have success plan for it. This is seven figures worth of information. So you're launching. Do you have an email list? Do you have a text list? Email list, text list, okay? Um, Pre-sale, grand opening, announce. Now, the next thing, number eight, is your social media strategy. Social media strategy. Now, pause. Somebody put in the comments, pause. Some of y'all may, I'm not on social media like that. People are making millions of dollars from Instagram and Instagram is free. Somebody said, look, pause. I'm going to say it and I'm, I'm just going to say it. If you're, if you don't have an online business, if you don't have an online presence, you don't have a business. If you don't have an online presence, you don't have a business. I'm not a social media person. That's cool. Become one. Somebody said, look, look, come on, come on, white killers. Am I telling the truth or not? I'm not trying to be smart. We are in 2023. Guys, if you are an entrepreneur, you have to bend, bob, and weave with the trends, with the time that we're in. Post-COVID especially, more people are online than ever before. E-commerce is huge. How we connect, how we do business, how we date. Shout out to me and be on the dating apps, right? Because nobody wants to talk to you people in person because they still like stranger danger and COVID and all other kinds of stuff. Pay attention. The old way of doing things does not work. Some of y'all don't have success because you're still sending postcards and still sending out flyers. You better get an electronic flyer and post that thing to your stories and stop playing. Come on, somebody. My business quadrupled when I went online. My, I was seeing person to person. I was seeing, shout out to my, my beginning clients. I was seeing person to person. When I had to start doing my business online, I 10 x my business. I said, and it was, y'all, I feel like a whole dodo. Y'all, I was getting, look, getting, I was getting dressed in the morning time and then getting, and I had to drive to the whole office. Then I would see one client, one, and then I would do work there, work all day and work with them. Then they would leave. Then I would get back in my car, be in traffic, drive home, all that. I could do 20 clients now online in that same time frame. I was like, what in the dodo? What in the, what in the old way of doing things? I was like, I can't believe now. And y'all know whoever done strategy system with me, they're not even Zoom. I be in here, look, my, my, women. I have, I be having my scarf on. <laughs> I, be having my, I be having my cream on my face. 
I'll be on, I'll be on the Zoom, I'll be on the I'll be like, yes, and what you gotta do next? Like, you better stop playing. I'll be in here with my scarf and my cream on my face. I don't even gotta get dressed when it don't be no Zoom. Play with me. Listen, I got on sweatpants and fluffy socks right now with this top. My bottoms will never match my top. Can I be real with y'all? Look, I, I love shoes. My shoe game is heavy. I was like, dang, I need to stop buying shoes. Don't nobody never see my shoes no more. My shoe game is heavy, y'all. Can't nobody, don't nobody never see my shoes. I'm always doing Zoom because my business is online. I just stop buying shoes. Come on, somebody. Right? So your social media strategy, what I would say to you guys is when I went, mind you, nothing I'm doing here, I'm being for real. Nothing I said tonight is fluff. I, I, I'm, I'm telling y'all, like some of y'all like, I don't want to hear that. Well, that's why you're not having success. You need to hear all of it. Real talk, right? All of it, all of it, all of it. So think about where is your client? That's why I did in the very beginning. Who is your client or customer? If you're servicing young folks, they may be on TikTok or Twitter. If you're servicing you know, older people, they may be on Facebook. If you're servicing professionals, they may be on LinkedIn. Um, if you have long content stuff, they may be on YouTube, right? So my population, you all are mostly on Instagram and YouTube. Why are y'all on YouTube? Because I help entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs and investors. So you guys are always looking on how to flip a house, how to build business credit, how to uh, work life balance, um, how to incorporate my business. Well, where do y'all go for that? Where's Google? Who, who, who owns YouTube? Google, right? So where's my biggest platform? My biggest platform by far is YouTube. Why? Because that's where y'all are. How many y'all go? How, how many? How many y'all go? How many y'all like on this live right now? How many y'all? How many y'all go on YouTube every day, at least one time a day? Come on, somebody. She said the playlist. Come on, Shannon. How many y'all going? Get like literally. I even do my personal development. Am I lying? Like I'm not telling y'all no. Like like I need y'all to think like this. Where is your client or customer? Every does it make sense, y'all? My YouTube is thirty. There was it thirty nine thousand, but my Instagram is only ten thousand. And mind you, that's only subscribers because my watch time is I get about a million people every other month of viewers. A million, a, 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 a million, a million, a million, a million. I can't hear what that song. A million, a million. What's that song, y'all? But an M. But I only got 39,000 subscribers. I'm on YouTube because y'all are on YouTube. So ask yourself, what? So, so where are your clients or customers? Right, I'm telling y'all some real stuff, right? Where then you left my Instagram. I'm look, I, and I'm not a content creator. I bet you I'm a content creator now. <laughs> was never on social media like that. Was never on social media like that. Y'all, now I can calculate. Now I can I can do an Instagram live and talk about a course or a product and for an hour, and then my email, look at my email and have a thousand, one thousand to three thousand dollars. I can calculate. Oh, I'm about to talk for hours. About to be a good one thousand to three thousand dollars of people that I'm going to help because my product or service is about helping. I'm talking to you about partnerships. Come on, somebody, right? So I don't care if social media is not your thing. Make it your thing, right? But what I will say is, I'm let me not be harsh. Make an effort. I'm telling y'all some real stuff. This is about how how to really how to start a business. Utilize why am I talking about social media? Because it's free. It's free. It's free. Stop paying for ads. Stop paying for billboards. Stop paying for buses. Stop paying for commercial. When you are launching or relaunching your business, it is wise to use your free resources. So that means I'm not good at social media. Okay, but I need to launch or relaunch or scale my business. I'm about to get good at social media. This is part of me doing my business. Guess what? Y'all want to hear a bar? You're not going to love every aspect of building your business. That's why I said in the very, very beginning, you need discipline because you're going to do it anyway. Because you're going to do it anyway. Why? Because you have to. Because you, if you have the best product or service, no clients or customers, you don't have a business. Come on, somebody. Hey, Alyssa. If you, you can have the best. Am I telling y'all some real stuff? Come on, Mary. You can have the best product, the best service. If you have no clients or customers, you have no business. There's people... There are people who have crappy services. Let's say you do hair. Let's say you bake cakes. Let's say you're a coach. How many of y'all, you bake cakes and your cakes are the best and there's somebody else's cakes are trash and they're, they're, they're selling way more than you. Their coaching program is trash. Their mentor program is trash. They're, 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 
And you like, they started before you and they hitting their social media harder. There's some people in credit. Look, there's some people in credit that their product is trash and they're a million times bigger than me. They started before me and they hit it harder and I got to eat that. So I'm getting better. Like, like, I'm not telling y'all, like, I'm like, that's why I'm being more vocal now. Like 2023, y'all going to see me do a lot more lives and be more present because I know the people in my industry that are getting all the, all the game are not telling y'all some right stuff. I'm just going to leave it right there. So your social media strategy, right? Have one. First of all, that's your marketing and advertising. Say, come on, that's your mother. Come on, listen to the trash. That's your marketing and advertising. I literally carve out time every single day for my marketing and advertising for social media. No matter what, at least an hour of my day is going to be on social media. Not, not scrolling. Mm, Jesus, write this down. Are you a content creator or a consumer? Are you a content creator or, or you're a consumer? That means when you're on social media, are you watching everybody else's content or are you creating content? Because if you want to launch a business, relaunch a business, scale a business, then you need to be creating content. Do you have to be perfect? No. Do you have to be the best? Is my stuff, my stuff still ain't perfect or the best? This is my first time ever doing a live using the microphone. Like, and I've been doing it for two years. Y'all, I tell y'all my real stuff because, and I still got a multi, I still have a, a, a brand that's doing very, very well and it's national. Come on, somebody, right? So for the social media, I would say this, pick a platform, pick one. What is, what is the one where your client and customers really are at? Pick a platform. Come on, somebody, right? Whether it's Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, you know, pick one, LinkedIn, whatever, right? And pick a strategy. Are you going to post once a week, once a day? You know, have be intentional about it. So pick the platform, how often you're going to post. And mind you, if you post right now, if you post once a week, can you start posting twice a week? If you post once a month, can you post five times a month? Just up it from what you're doing right now. I'm telling y'all some real stuff, right? Who's that? Doc, come on. I'm telling y'all some real stuff. Can you just up it from what you're doing right now? If you need, and also just get good at one type of content. Y'all, if you guys pay attention to my social media at all, I used to post all kinds of things. Now, every single thing I post, even the quotes are what? Reels. Even the quotes. Even the quotes are what? Every Go to my page after this, Care Credit Tools. Every single thing I post on Instagram is a reel. Why? Because Instagram is pushing out reels to compete with who? TikTok. So I'm utilizing the things the platform is paying attention to. And because I'm making reels more often, Instagram, based on the algorithm, is pushing it out to more people. And then guess what YouTube is doing? Now YouTube is doing what? Shorts. Why is YouTube doing shorts? YouTube is doing shorts to compete with Instagram reels and TikTok. All I do is make an Instagram reel. And then and my, 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 reels, my, my, my reels are monetized. All my platforms are monetized at this point, all of them. And I only have 39,000 on YouTube. All I do is make the reel. And then what do I do? Y'all peep this. I make the reel for Instagram. Then I put the same reel on YouTube as a short, on TikTok as a short. I share it to my Instagram stories. Now I have a story. I share it to my Facebook stories. And I share it to my YouTube stories. Now from one piece of content, I have you Instagram reel, Instagram story, Facebook story, sometimes a Facebook post, YouTube shorts, YouTube story, TikTok. I've hit, I have seven different types, seven different ways that my content is out there. And all I did was make one reel. Y'all just get good. Whether you're going to do like, write these down. Like if your social media should either be entertaining or informational, entertaining information, those are things that will help you grow the fastest. So are you doing tips? Are you doing how to's? Are you doing behind the scenes? Are you doing pictures of your product? Are you doing testimonials? Right? Don't, you don't have to be like, I'm not saying be an expert. I'm saying pick a platform, pick how frequently, get good at a type of content and do it over and over again until you get better. Because the best way to get better is by doing it. Come on, somebody. Y'all, I still left my very first YouTube video up. It's trash. It's trash. It's trash. I got better. Why? By doing it. By doing it. By doing it. Okay, guys. So have a social media, um, um, a social media presence. Um, so pick a platform, a master something. Uh, do it in advance. Build momentum. So that means if you want to launch May first, you're starting to build up the momentum about your business right now on social media. Right now, right now. Somebody put right now, right now. You know, coming soon. You know, or say you say you don't even want to say coming soon yet. Say you just you're about to be about you know lashes, or about to be about hair, or about to be about you know it's about to be a barber shop. Well, maybe in advance you'll start to doing hair care tips. Maybe you start to do pictures. Maybe you start to do testimonials. Maybe you're taking pictures of you buying the, the stuff, you know, getting new um, clippers and getting new chairs. 
right? You're building it up in advance. You're building it up in advance because you never want to launch or relaunch without the momentum. It's the combination of the, I'm telling you some real stuff. It's the combination because I didn't look, I didn't do that. I had the product or service and no momentum. I was like, hey, I'm about to fix your credit. They were like, who are you? <laughs> I was like, I'm about to fix your whole life. Y'all know I'm actually I'm like, I'm about to, we have the bright teachers in cycles, cycles of poverty. We about to buy these houses. They was like, who are you? I was like, I'm Terry. <laughs> I had the product or service and no momentum. I'm telling y'all some real stuff. Y'all be better than me. And he still blessed it. But I would have been so much further along had somebody had a talk like this. I told you, look, we, we almost in the last episode, I'll recap. But I told you about mindset. I told you about habits. I told you about um, incorporating. I told you guys about building business credit. I told you guys about attracting customers. I told you guys about um, setting the goals. Like, y'all, do y'all even understand how much information I just jam-packed in here that people charge y'all thousands for? Real talk. I gave y'all my timeline. Everything. I, I broke down to $10,000 a month, like everything, y'all. So just pick a, a social media platform and do it in advance. Build the momentum, build the momentum, build the momentum. Even, um, and I will say this, one of the questions you guys ask me a lot is, do I need to, should I use my personal page or my business page, right? So I'll use example for uh, Instagram. For Instagram, I had a personal page, right? I had my personal, just Terry Cowles, it was my personal page. And then when I launched my business, I did make a separate one, Care Credit Tools, right? For my business. And what I started to do, guys, what I did is I transitioned for like a good month. I started, I started just posting on my business page. And then on my personal page, I would put follow care credit tools, uh, post on care credit tools. And on my personal page, follow care credit tools. My personal page had 1500 people at a time. I gave myself 30 days for 30 days. All I did was post on my business page and on my personal page. I kept on saying, follow care credit tools, follow care. Even, even my description on my business page, on my personal page said, follow care credit tools. And then at a certain date, I just cut, I completely deactivated it and never went back. Guys, when you're a self-employed entrepreneur, you are your brand. For my Facebook, my Facebook is a public page. And a lot of you guys follow me on my actual physical, like my Facebook page. If you don't have a business page, my, I have my personal page. I'm okay with that because I am my brand. Part of what, Jesus, part of, some people are going to come and do business with you solely because they want to support you. Solely because they like your values. They like your reason why. They resonate with you. They see you in them right? People always remember this. People do business with brands that they know, like, and trust. Know, like, and trust. Know, like, and trust. So stop telling me you're a business owner. And when I try to find you on Instagram, your page is private. I'm going to say it one more time. Stop telling me you're a business owner, entrepreneur, investor, and I go to try and find you on Instagram or somewhere else and your page is private. The essence of being a business owner is because you want people to find you. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Look, come on, somebody. If you, uh, I have people that have been like, oh, oh, I'm a business owner. I'm like, great, what's your page? And they're like, oh, wait, send me a request. I will not because you're playing with me. You're wasting my time. First of all, gonna be this is going to be for the podcast. Ain't nothing going on in your life that's sort of serious. Like, I got somebody who's like, I'm a business owner, I'm a business owner, I'm a business owner, I'm a business owner, I'm, a business owner. I'm, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And everything private, everything locked down. Ma'am, first of all, it's not that deep. We don't care that much about what you're doing. It's not that deep. Like, your, your stuff like 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 secret service, like, relax. Nobody cares that much. I'm being mean, I'm being mean, y'all, I'm being mean. But I'm like, how you, how you, I hear saying you a boss that everything private. And then, and, then, and then you have one page that people can see, and on that page you go, you post all the time, I'm a private person. Well, then get off social media. It's called social media to meet people. How you want to take the time to post on social media that you're private? You look dumb. That wasn't nice. I'm working with God working on me. Oh, that person irritates me. I'm private. I'm private. I'm private. Well, get off of social media. Look, look, wait, 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 kill us. She said, right? I, I only, I only, uh, I'm only, only, I don't show everything because I'm private. Okay. Well be private over there. Child, please. Like, you know, and I, and mind you, so I'm joking around, but I'm not. So what I would say to you guys is the essence y'all know, look, come on, Alyssa, Alyssa doesn't see another side of me. Like, come on y'all. So you want your pages to be public. You no, know, you, sh you, you can control how much you, put, how much you share. Right. But the essence of being a brand is you want people to find you. So if you're somebody who, who gets anxiety about, you know, all those things and maybe you need to rethink what you're doing and why, or if you want like a back end service or support, and I'm being real, 
Like I'm being real because if you tell me you want to be a multimillionaire and you tell me you want to be a boss, you want an international brand, that means people are going to need to be able to find you. People are going to Google you. People are going to look for your LinkedIn. Like it's, it's, it is what it is, right? There's a cost of doing, but there's an exchange, right? I'm, be, I'm being real with y'all, right? And so <clears throat> have your pages be public. Um, you can transition if you want. Um, I still have my Facebook, which is my, my original Facebook from the beginning, but everything else is like, you know, my new YouTube. Uh, my LinkedIn has always been the same or whatever. But honestly, guys, like, there's not too much. Like, I tell y'all all my dirt. I tell y'all my good and my bad. I told you I launched my business. Look, I left my job the wrong way. Oh, dude, Terry, Terry got uh, fired from that job. I told y'all I left the job. Like, I tell y'all my stuff. Like, that's what this world looks like. I told y'all that the money was looking funny. I almost lost my house. Okay? Like, what you want? Right? Like, and honestly, like real talk, I joke around, but if more of us were honest about what this world looks like, then when y'all, Jesus, when y'all are going through the process, y'all wouldn't think that you're doing something wrong. Y'all will understand that every successful entrepreneur has the days where, look, you know, Oprah's story is crazy. Uh, Jay-Z's story is crazy. 50 Cent's story is crazy. Steve Harvey, Tyler Perry. Well, Steve Harvey was homeless for three years in his car. Come on, y'all. Do y'all pay attention? Everybody who has been wildly successful has had some dark moments. I've had some dark, dark, dark days. I almost lost everything three, a good three times. The one house I still got, that wasn't nothing but God. That house probably was in foreclosure like five times when I was building my brand and I didn't know what I was doing. I had a gift, but I didn't know how to run a brand. Had a gift, had a skill, had a passion, did not know how to run a business. Almost, and I'm the credit lady. Almost lost everything. Can I be real with y'all? That's what it looks like. So no, you, it's okay. Nope, you about to see like, you know, the old house, the new house, like, like all those things because I want you guys, my brain's about transparency. I want you guys to know that you're going to have highs and you're going to have lows. It's part of the process. That's why I need you to work on personal growth. That's why I need you to be, you don't have to be, you know, a Christian, but you be spiritual. You be accountable. You have um a mentor. You have a coach. That's why you read. That's why you do affirmations. That's why you do your goals daily. Why do you think that entrepreneurs do stuff like that? Because on your days when everything goes wrong and you got zero dollars and zero cents in the bank, you got to remember why you're doing this. That reason why has to be bigger than you. An entrepreneur will have $50 in the bank on Monday and will have a $3,000 contract Wednesday and have a $30,000 event on Friday. But Monday you have $50. Yes or yes? Well, on that Monday when you have $50, if that's going to break you, if that's going to make you crumble, if that's going to make you quit, if that's going to make you second guess doing this, then you might not be built for it. Because if you quit on Monday, you wouldn't have got to 30000 on Friday. If you would have quit on Monday when your bank account said $50, you wouldn't have gotten to the 30000 on Friday. Come on, wait closer. Boom. Can I tell y'all what it really looks like? Because that's what it really looks like. You know how many times I've made bad investments? I've made bad investments. I, I, I took a six, I took two six-figure losses last year. Losses. And by the grace of God, still kept my business afloat and hired. Losses. It's another lie for another day. Are we, we don't like sometimes things don't pan out how you thought or you invest in people, places, things, whatever. And it does nothing but guzzle all your money. When you're a self-employed entrepreneur, you earn every dollar. That means when you spend it, you have to earn it back. Come on, somebody. But the way my faith is set up, the way my God is set up, I'm like, oh, really? That was a look. I talked to God like I'm like, really, God, like you that that, that lesson had to come like that. Like you could have just said something. You ain't have to do all that. But OK, I ain't scared. My language to myself is always I'm not scared I've been here before when you lived in shelters when you've had to put groceries back when you've been in group homes it's not like I'm like oh I've, I've lived through worse than this come on devil come on enemy that's all you got that's all you got okay six figure loss got it all right what I'm about to do right now I'm about to do the Come on, somebody. Come on, sister. I ain't shit. I ain't never scared, guys. You And mind you, it's easy right now when we're in this environment. I'm saying it. But you have to have that mentality 
Otherwise, every time something doesn't go right, every time, like you can't be somebody who quits when it doesn't go right. You can't be somebody who quits when you lose the money. You can't be somebody who quits when it's a bad investment. You can't be somebody who quits when people don't support you. You can't be somebody who quits when like you, you, you just can't like quitting is not in your DNA. It's literally not an option. It's literally not an option. That's how you have to treat your business. Because I promise you, Jesus, if you just keep on going, what he has for you on the other side of faith is so much more than you ever expected. You think I ever expected to have a $25,000 day? You, you, do you know what I did the very first time I had 25? I was like, let me hurry up. Look, look, this is the ghetto. Look, 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 because y'all always, look, this is the ghetto on me. The very first time, I'm, like, oh, I'm about to go max that out because they ain't about to take it from me. I had $25,000 cash in my, in my purse. All right, rather than back it, back that out because I was scared. Can I be real with y'all? Like, come can we stop acting like we're just so refined? Like, listen, I done been through enough life. I done had people lie, cheat, steal. I done been scanned. I done had identity theft fraud. Man, what I, my, my bank said, listen, can, Jesus, we don't have enough time. I'm going to wrap this up, y'all, because I could I could tell y'all some stuff. We got to we sit and talk one day. Like, I got so many stories in me you don't even understand. Can we stop acting like we're used to seeing $25,000 in one day? I ain't never seen $25,000 in one day. That was the very first time. I've done more than that. But like the very, very, very first time? I was like, is it for real? I'm about to go to the bank. Look, I got dressed. I got my ID and stuff. I took all the money out the bank. <laughs> no, I've had, no, I was a six figure executive, right? So I've had money before, but I never just had like $25,000 in like one hour, like just going to like, and what, like, and it was my money. Like it wasn't no loan. It wasn't like, it was my money. I was like, hello, I like to make a withdrawal. <laughs> How much? 25,000. And then, you know, you look like this to see if anybody saw it, heard you. I need to withdraw 25,000 from my business account. <laughs> Y'all, can I be real? <laughs> like, did they, did they ask you, do you want to count it? I do, did, yes, count it for me. Count, count it for me. So I just, I just do this every day. Are you, uh, I need you to count it. <sighs> the guy was scared. I was like, can this security guard walk me to call? He's like, man, nobody cares about your little 25. I need, I need a security guard to walk me to my car. I'm about to go to the dollar store and get all the lotion, all the, all the secret deodorant, all the pens, all the clipboards. I'm going to go right to Family Dollar and get some Dove soap. I'm going to get a two-year supply of Dove soap. All right, y'all, stop playing. No, but can we stop playing like when you really have hustle? And a lot of us, you're the Jesus. I love y'all. Can I tell the truth? Like, for the people that hung on this this long, God bless y'all. But like, a lot of us are, I know who my audience is. So y'all are the first time entrepreneurs, first time investors, first time homeowners, first time people getting married. First time people you know going to college, right? A lot of y'all are the first in your family. So you might be the first person really experiences that. First time, first person is like your, your, your zip code changed. Man, I was like, I'm about to buy everything from Family Dollar. Because as an entrepreneur, I know that when I'm up, come on, somebody like, like, all right, so look, look, everybody stop playing. But the, the lesson in it is as an entrepreneur, I understand my money goes like this sometimes. Right now it's more stable because I, uh, I, I have a stable brand now, right? But especially as you're building, you're going to have peaks and flows. This is a nugget for you guys. So when it's good, I'm smart and I stack up. I'm about to pay off on my credit cards. I'm about to like uh, pay my car insurance for the year. Pay, like for real, y'all. Like I will I, now. Like 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 I said, now I'm stable. But I want you to think about it. Let's say you get a real big contract or a real big invoice or something of that nature. Like y'all, stop. A lot of times we make more, then we start spending more. No. A lot of times we make more, we start spending more. No. As soon as I start making some money, I start doing some things. I paid my mortgage off for the year. Paid the car note. Come on, y'all. I'm telling y'all some real stuff. Why? Because I know that there might be a time where I have a slow month, a slow, pro like a slow, whatever. So I'm preparing in the times where things are right to sustain my business. I'm hiring. I'm. Come on, y'all. I don't even look. I forget where we was at. Um, social media strategy. Child. So pick a pick a platform. You know how often you're going to post, who you're talking to, but like social media, hands down, like me getting good at it has has quadrupled my business. It really, really has. And now I'm on social media. Now I actually starting to enjoy it a lot more, and I've streamlined the process so I can start to like be more present. Um, number nine, 
is business licenses and insurance. Write that down, guys. Business licenses and insurance. So depending on your type of business and where you are, you might need a business license. So this is even for me. Like I, I, um, I'm not a Section 8 landlord right now, but I was a Section 8 landlord before. And in Philadelphia County, you just needed your business license and runner's license. In Darby, you needed like your business license. And you had to take a class. You didn't have to need your runner's license, but not your business. So depending on the type of business you have and where you are, you might need some type of business licenses. So make sure you get that. And insurance. If you have a physical store for people to come in, a physical place, people are coming to your house. Guys, if people are coming to your house for whatever, you need to have some kind of insurance. And guess what? Even if you're a client or if you're a coach or consultant or whatever, I have business insurance. I use Hiscox. It was H I S T. Um, maybe I'll put some in here. But like, uh, in case like somebody would like sue my business, oh, I got a policy. Like I, I I'm, I'm ready for you. I work too hard. Even if you're a, a coach or consultant or whatever, you can get basic liability policy. Sometimes like twenty five dollars, not a whole lot of money, just to have like the right kind of like coverage. Like I don't play like my stuff is trademarked now. My stuff, I got my insurance. Like I'm not playing no games with my brain. I work too hard. When you scratch and survive, and something, Jesus, something goes from my idea to being a thing. You think somebody about to come and take that or come and threaten what I just did? Oh no, I don't sacrifice for this thing. I didn't tie, I didn't prayed and cried and got on my knees for this thing. I didn't almost lost everything for this thing. I, I wish somebody would. Come on, y'all. So business licenses and insurance. And the last step, step number 10 is, right, is to create it and launch it. Just like pick your date and just actually do the thing. Stop, stop doing all this back end work and you never actually launch your actual business. Rewatch it and write down the things, right? Write down the 10 steps for you guys. But this is where in the beginning, you're going to be doing everything and be okay with that. You want to know, every, if anybody, you should know every aspect of your business. You should know every aspect. That's how you know how to hire, what you need, what you don't need, all those things. And then as you grow, utilize your free resources, right? Maybe interns, maybe family and friends, maybe, um, you know, a virtual assistant to actually kind of grow, right? 